early morning walkies. On TV. <laughs> What's the best thing about getting up at stupid o'clock? The fresh air and the silence. Oh, it's lovely. Beautiful Friday morning. On our walk route. Yes? A walk a route. You just feel so much better getting up early and and just getting on with it. What time is it? Look at that Must for a stone wall. 24 7. Like. Yeah. I'd say that's a thousand jerseys. And the blossom coming out on the. Did we say blackthorn? You gotta be better than that, dog. You're showing off for the millions of viewers. Yeah. Why hello there, my name is Rooney and I'm going to give you the latest update from the West Cork Wander Garden. I'm feeling a bit sleepy. Hello and we're back in the van, are we Roo? Yes, um, it's good to be back in the van and it's lovely and warm and I'm not sure why I'm sitting here with a jacket and hat on. But anyway, just to let you know what we're doing this week, we got the early potatoes in still a lot more potatoes to be done and also we got some trees in didn't we Rue? Just want to thank everybody for helping us with the identification of the shrubs that I asked about last week, the ribes, didn't realise that was a native North American um, current I think and the Chilean firebush that I'm going to show you a little video clip of that in about a week's time when it's literally it's just like a fireball and last of all the Fatsia japonica thank you for everybody who stated that that was actually a present to the old lady who um lived here previously she was given it by a chap by the names of name of Lyle Watson he was a uh, South African botanist and zoologist apparently a botanist and zoologist by the age of 19 and uh, then went on at age 23 to become director of Johannes Johannesburg Zoo hugely interested in nature has written a few books um sadly he's passed away now but he gave he used he was living here in West Cork and he gave that shrub to the old lady who used to live here and um he said to her at the time it wouldn't survive outside in Ireland it only grows it's from south africa and it really should be kept in a conservatory but she popped it outside and when <laughs> we came here it had well and truly taken over the back of the farmhouse so when we took when i took a little piece of it out and i wanted to keep it i'm and put it in the in the field here i was very unsure that it would take but seemingly it seems to love it here so I'm delighted about that and it's lovely to have a bit of a story over it as, about it as well. So thank you Liz for that information. Anyway, time to show you what we've been up to. It's bud time. Time to get these buds into the ground. Pop you on time lapse and then I'll show you afterwards where we put them. So spuds are going in. These are Duke of York first earlies. So I'm putting them in. As you can see, the Eskimo pizza boxes worked out very well and I'm basically just placing them in the middle of each pizza box so that works really well um, I've put the cardboard down I'm a little bit concerned about the grass perhaps should it on in the onions we'll see how we go may have to mulch over with some um, bark mulch with those um, at some stage or it may probably have to do the same here as well as they grow but we'll see how we go so that's where we're at
was out all morning and the weather was pretty good. It was cold but dry. And I got another potato bed done here. This is going to be for my second earlies. I decided to make it wider because we still have a lot of potatoes to plant. So I figured having it as narrow as I did the last one um, isn't really a benefit. So we go a bit wider and I think I'll do another wide one. I'll have another two more to do for main crop. So that's the plan. It's drizzling now, so I'm thinking I'm going to get the remaining bits of cardboard I have here. Um, still have to take a lot of the plastic off, some of it. I might just put that in the greenhouse for now and come back to it again tomorrow, hopefully. So them in for a moment because I don't really want it to get wet and soggy. These are still the potatoes left to plant so my first earlies are gone in. And I've decided I am going to just stagger them a little bit further. I was going to try and get them all in, but I'm going to stagger them just a small bit because I don't necessarily need them all coming at the same time. So my second earlies are the British Queens, which are these ones. Loads of those to go in. And then main crop Morris Piper and main crop Cur Pink. And then these purple rains are actually also second earlies. So perhaps I should actually try and just get a little bed done for them while I have the compost. Hmm. So much to do, so little time. And another trailer load of horse manure gone. Okay, so I thought it just got stuck in. It's still drizzling, but I guess a bit of rain ain't gonna kill you. And what do they say? There's nothing like bad weather, it's just bad clothing. Well, I've got my plastic pants and my plastic raincoat on, so we're good. This is the bed I've just done for the purple rains. They're the second earlies, the next second earlies as well. Or the next potatoes to go in. They have only 20 of them, so I'm just gonna pop them into this bed here. And that is the end of my second trailer of compost. I had a little bit left over, which popped in to my strawberry bed. I planted these strawberries quite a while ago. Anyway, I'm hoping they'll come back. And then I'm going to see if I can get some straw or something to put over them. So this one is planted, despite the fact you can see that the dog has walked all over it.
I had a slight brainwave when working out how to plant these trees. So I've got, I think I might have said, Quilta were giving away free trees. And so I decided to get two more that we can coppice. Coppice meaning that we can cut for firewood and are fast growing. So the two that I got are red alder and Italian alder. They were the ones I googled and they were the best. Um, I also got five lime then, which I don't know what we'll do with, but they're interesting. They sound interesting. So I'm going to pop the five li lime in just here at the end of the alder, common alder line. But my brainwave, coming back to my brainwave, I figured that if I just mowed a line across, then I could see where I needed to plant them. So it's very wet. It's not good to mow, to be honest. The poor old tractor is see, seen better days now. He's looking a bit rough and needs a good wash. But yeah, it's really helped actually. So I'm just going to pop them in now and I won't bore you with that. I'll show you when I'm done. So yesterday I finished up at about six. It was horrendous weather. Such a difference from today. Absolutely gray and torrential rain. But we have two more lines of trees, the ones with the white labels. Uh, red alder and Italian alder. So two lines of those. So now we have, that brings us a total of five lines of coppice. Um, so really interested to see how these come along. I don't think we will try and squeeze in any more lines because we kind of want to use the rest of this, the rest of this field for uh, animals of some sort chickens or pigs or something. So um, yeah, so we'll keep you updated on the coppice. Thanks again, as always, for watching the video. Like and subscribe if it's something that you would like to follow and to see more of. We really appreciate the support and especially the comments. Um, they are just inspiring and it's lovely to hear from everybody all over the world on, on their situation and what, and particularly if you've had experiences um, like we have with gardening and this and this and that. It's hugely supportive and uh, I really appreciate them. Till next week, see you then.